yeah now we can begin okay um hello everyone so today i'm going to go in through uploads and downloads in shiny so i'll use the slides um the templates that i have for the book club so but i'll make a reference back to the book the main book itself so and i also move in between the slides and the book and the art studio so for this chapter the main objective are to learn how to include file upload and download functionalities into a shiny application next um, implement the key ui components required to provide uploading or downloading functionalities in an app also we're going to learn implementing the key server components required to provide uploading and downloading functionalities in an app then we'll describe how the ui and server elements fit together to provide these functionalities we will also develop an app that validates the user's input from an upload. Then observe examples when uploading or downloading functionalities is applied within a simple Shiny application. So this chapter begins with the file upload here. So to upload a file within Shiny, we need the file input so this is what it's the syntax looks like so it takes in two um, arguments that's the id and the label then some other arguments are also available that could be optional or something that you can change so like the multiple so this can be used to allow users to upload more than one by default so it's by default set to false so but if it's set to true that means the user can upload more than one file so the accept argument allows you to specify which type of files you want to allow the user to upload this is given in form of a character vector so and it's about the type of files that are coming in. And these are examples of the file extensions, the CSV, .csv, .tsv, .rds. And we have the main type as well, application slash JSON, image slash, that's the PNG. So um, the one of these also could be used as well. So, but to get more information about the input, you can use the question mark in the console to learn more or use the help tab. So the file input on the server side returns a data frame with a special structure. So there are four columns within this data frame that is returned. The first one is name. That's the first column within the data frame is the name column. So that's where we're talking about maybe one single file. But if it's multiple, you still have all those information lined up for that column. So the name column is the name of the file on user's computer. Then the size, that is the file size of the file that was uploaded. So the default is 5 MB, or we can adjust it with um, the option of shiny.max request size option. This can be set using the options um, function from R. So we can set this before the, um, the shiny uploads itself. Okay, so... Um, the type as well, we have the main type of the file, then the data path. So the data path is the file path on the server. This is temporary. 
So this is where the file is kept temporarily while any other task or operations is going to be performed on it. So uploading now. So there are two things to note about uploading a data set. So this we are now talking about data sets here. So before I continue with this, let me take you through. There's an example that was used in the book. So, um, okay, this is the example. So I have it in my R Studio. I'll take you there now. So I think I would go to the first one. So the first one that is the example in the book, it allows us to upload or files so in this example we can upload multiple files uh, of any type because here we're not specifying the type of files that we want to accept using the accept um, arguments as described in the book so here we are going to go with that as a default that any of the files can be accepted then we can now display here. So it is going to be displayed in the table output. Then on the server side, the files, that's the table output that we're looking at, the file outputs, files output now, is going to display all the files that have been uploaded. That's going to display the name, the size, the type, and I think the last one is the data part. So all the information about the files that were uploaded will be displayed in this table output. So that is going to be achieved using the render table function, and it's going to accept the files that were selected for upload. So the information about these files will be displayed in this table. So if I run this, let me show you. So this is what the Shiny app looks like. Okay, so if I click on the button here, it's going to have a pop-up, which allows me to just bring in any file. So let me just select these two files or, um, okay, I can select a PDF and a Back here, so I open. Okay, maximum upload size. Okay, the files are rather big, so let me just choose another one. Um, so let me let me see if this will go. Okay, this goes well. So now it's showing the files that I've uploaded. I uploaded two files. So this is one, they, they are both PNG and the information about the name of the file are displayed here, more than one. Then the sizes of each of the files, both are PNG and the path that was created is a temporary path as you can see here for this file before any other task or operations would be performed on it. So I'm going to close that now. So I'll take you back to the book. Okay. Share. So I hope you can see my screen. Or if you have any addition you want to add before I go into uploading data. Any comments? Nope, we are, or... we are cool. Second, go on. Yeah, yeah, we, I said we, we, could, we could continue. Okay, good. Okay, then. So um, the next option that we have when we want to upload data is when we want to upload data or any file is that we want to upload a data file. Okay. So here we're looking at a different way of handling the input now. So first we would need to make sure that 
we initialize the the input for as null. Okay, so we need to initialize it to be null on page load, so that we would not have um, issues as explained here. So on the, so you would then we will need to check and make sure that this is set as a required uh, input that must be available. So this function rec req helps us to make sure that that is not empty. A file has to be uploaded. So until the first file is that's, so we're making sure of that. So the next thing that we might want to check here is that's the second thing that we need to note is that the accept argument for this file input helps us to limit input types. Although the browser doesn't always enforce this, so we still need to make sure that, okay, we use the validate function to check that, okay, actually what we want that was specified in the accept argument is actually what we are getting. So, and if that is not the case, then we would have to kind of check that and send out uh, a message to the user. So, the accept argument is, is only a, a suggestion, like that's the basic thing. It's just like we're giving a suggestion to the browser and it's not always 100% going to be enforced. So that is that. So then we'll look at the example here. So the code here is what we have from the book. So that's the example that was used in the book as well. So the app is looking at allowing users to upload .csv and .tsv files. So it's not going to allow any other file. That is what it's supposed to do. So then we're also going to take um, values from the numeric imputes. That is the end, the value. So by the, now it's set to five. The minimum value is one. Then there will be a step. It's going to be one, one. So whatever information or data that is within this uploaded file is going to be displayed here. So on the server side, we're going to check that, okay, the file that is supposed to be uploaded is actually uploaded. It's not empty. It's not null. Okay. So now then we check for the extension. Here on this line, we are trying to extract the extension. And that is done using this function from the tools package that's file underscore ext, e -A -X -T. So it's going to take the name of the file impute as the name component. You know, we talked about the data frame that is returned on the server side, contains the name, size, data pass, and the um, type of the file that was uploaded. So we take out the name component and this function is going to extract the extension, but it's going to omit the dot. It's going to take away the dot, only the text, the character part, and that's the letters are returned. So when this is now returned, it's going to be saved inside this uh, variable. Then we're now going to use this switch um, control statement to check which of these options or file type was actually uploaded. So if it's CSV, we're going to use the run this. If it is TSV, we'll run this line of code. And if it's anything other than this, we're going to have the validate function run to display the information to the user that the file you're actually uploading is invalid we need you to upload .csv or tsv files. So if we get the actual file, then we'll be able to render the inf uh, get the information displayed in the table output. And that is what the example application is going to do. So let's 
go into R Studio. So that the so that's the second um the second example that we have. So I'm going to run the example so you can see these are just comments here. So the same thing that we have from the book. So I'll just run this app. Then we can see, let me check, do I have that shit? Okay, so this is the app. So we have the file inputs with the button here. So no file is selected yet. So if I click on this and I try to go for a different um, file, because of the options that we have in the accept argument, I won't be able to see any other file type other than the CSVs. So if I go into maybe this, let me look out for something. Okay, so now I can see CSVs and TSV files here. So I can select any of this and just push that in. Then you can see the data is being displayed now. So I can change this as well, as many as I want. So I can make changes to that. So that is what we're having. But right now, <clears throat> We can see the effect of the validate function because of that argument. But if we take that argument out, we'll be able to see the, that information displayed to us from that function, that is the validate function. So let me, let me close up this and the app running. Then I'll go back to our studio. So, the reason why we're not seeing the information that was supposed to be displayed here is that this is actually doing its work for now, as it's suggesting to the browser. But if we take it out, okay, we'll be able to see other files. And if we try to upload that, then we will see that this is going to give us the information that is here. That's what I try to do to see, okay, um, let's see the effect of this one. So now if I try to browse now, I'll have access to other files. So let me just pick this file. So it's now telling me that you can see now that the, the information is now being displayed that, okay, invalid file, please upload this. But before, when the accept argument was there, it wasn't displaying that, like I didn't see that coming up. So that is for this example. So if, I don't know. Okay, there's also something that I have to do here using the, trying to step through using a breakpoint. So we can step through and look at how this works out. So I'll go back to our studio and let me just return back what I took out. That is the accept argument. Now I'm going to step through so that we'll see the option of when CSVs are uploaded as well as TSV. Then we'll be able to see the output. So. Let me try to put the breakpoint here. So I'll save that again and click the run app. So right now I'll click on this, just pick a file. So now nothing has been displayed. Before when the breakpoint wasn't there, it automatically displays the data. So but I'll take it back to our studio, then we'll step through, just clicking the enter button. So right now it's on within the server, but the we've not gotten into this switch control statement. So I'll click on enter. 
then going again now we're inside the switch statement we're trying to check from what we have here you can see in my value um part of the environment you can see the extension now is already having a value of csv okay that means the file that i uploaded is actually csv now it's going to step through so we should have the data displayed in the app now because right now the the line for csv has been run and you can see that just like the information you will see when you upload or use a read underscore csv file but now we are using the vroom function it's uploaded and read the data into r so now if i take you back to the app itself we should have the information displayed so this is the information displayed after stepping into the switch control statement so that is that so um any addition comments at this point any addition comments before i go to the download oh uh, no you're, you're good to go okay so the next thing is looking at downloads so for file downloads we're going to use this input so that is the download button the download button or download link so both are taking the ID and the label as, as arguments. So we can also further customize them by adding these arguments as well, the class or the icon to add some kind of graphics to it. So um, as we've known with other imputes, there's no render function for the download buttons or the download link button you doesn't have a render function we're using the download handler instead so the download handler has two arguments which are both functions so they we have the file name and the content function so both are functions but the first one file name takes no arguments but returns file name as a string. While the content function takes one argument as the file and it's going to return, um, so it's going to give like the file, which is going to be the path to save the file in a place that will be shiny knows about. So it can then send it to the user that is going to download that file. So this allows Shiny to control where the file should be saved. That is, we're looking at somewhere that is going to be secure and accessible by our Shiny application. So, but we still have the control over the content of that file. Either we want a CSV or a TSV, whichever file we want. That, or the, that is going to be the final file that the user is going to download so whatever i want to convert anything to then the user will be able to download maybe a graphic or tsv graphic from maybe our plus or something yes it all depends on us but we have control over that so um that's part two. save the file okay so this is a typical um handler that's for the download so we have the two functions here shown to us. So to explain further on downloading data this time around, so this is a diagram of data download functionality, but we can still have more information here in the book. So there's also an example here 
that we would want to look at before we go deep into the details. So this example here is showing us that the download button is not paired with OK this, then this is the handler. The file name would return whatever is inside of the function statement while the file gets us the address like as we, it has been explained here. So, um, okay, here now. So then downloading the data now. This is what has been shown in the graphics here. So user uploads or access data in app. So this is going to come from maybe the file input or maybe like the example that we're going to have here is from the one, some of the packages. So then whatever comes out of this, we use the user provides input to explore or modify the data. Like we saw from the file upload, we can change the number of rows that is going to be returned from what has been uploaded. So then from there, user wants to explore, to export data, for use outside of our Shiny application. Or user downloads data by clicking this, the download button. So next, we'll now go to Shiny. Shiny is going to handle this time. to have create the file name, write the data to user's computer. Then the download handler now takes the file name. Uh, your voice is going out. You hear us? Maybe wait a minute um, for the connection to restore. Yeah. So sorry, there was a my no, no, no okay. So uh, yeah. So there, that's the explanation for the picture that we have in there. So we can allow user the user to download a file containing data based on their exploration of an application. So this um, we're providing functionalities to download a tab separated file or a PNG. So we can see uh, there should be, a, there's an example here. So this example takes us through an a shiny application that allows us to get data sets that are related or within a package, a data, one, some of the, the list of packages in our, our environment. So then we have a table output that we have a preview of the data if it's a data frame. So then we have the download button here that would allow us to download it as a 
TSV. So on the server side, we're going to get the data that we can extract from that package that will select the, the data that has been displayed to us. So although the apl application is not having the functionality to really separate or select out those ones that are data frames, all the data objects are being displayed within the dropdown. So then we're now going to check if whatever we're getting is actually a data frame. So if it's not a data frame, we're going to get this information displayed. But if it is, we'll get that returned as a reactive data object or object here, which is going to be passed to the render table function here that would now be displayed in our table output. So, and now if we click on the download button, the handler is going to allow us to download the data as a file with the name of the data set plus the, then is now having the extension of .tsv, which is now going to be used to create the file and we'll have it on our local system. So I'm going to take you back to our studio quickly and we'll be able to see the, okay, let me remove this. So that's for the second example. And this is the, just the description of the download button there. So, um, yeah, this is the second example for the download. I will show that now. So this is the Shiny application. So it has the list of all the files, either ones containing tabular data or not. So if I select any of this, okay, this one that is tabular and is a data frame, let me see. So this is not a data frame. So that's why the validate function is now sending the message that air yeah, passengers is not a data frame. So, but if I click on this button, it's just going to download the HTML file to my local system, not the data object itself. So I will select one that is, okay, yeah. Is a data frame, then I click on this, then I can save that on my local system and I will have it within my local system. So it's, it's there, so it's here in my download folder on my local system. So that is the way the example works. So I'll take you back to the book. So now next, okay, so that's for the data. Next, we want to look at downloading reports. So this is a combination of understanding how to parameterize your R Markdown file, as well as bringing it into Shiny. So this is explained here, and the picture here helps us to have a picture of what it's like to download the report. So user provides input here, so the input can, these are examples of the input that could be passed or re given by the user. So the, this could be the distribution or input disk, that's the ID of the input. Then the second one is the N uh, input, that's the ID for that input. So then user generates the report. So this is, the information that we have here is now seen as a list of parameters that would be used either this way for the R markdown or this as coming from the server side. So this is now used as params sent to a dot R markdown file for rendering. So if this is now passed to the R markdown file, we now use this function 
R Markdown, the function render from the R Markdown package. So this will help us to generate that report that we actually want to download. So the report is outputted to user's computer as HTML or PDF. The file type is actually um, customized within the R Markdown file itself, not from uh, within um, Shiny. So we have to do something from the template that we're going to use and the parameters are what will be sent from Shiny. I suppose. That's from my knowledge that I have. So this is the way it works. So we can allow users to download a report based on the exploration of an application by passing it parameterized um, parameters. So we have a parameterized R markdown. It's a good way to do this. So potential parameters, filters, simulation parameters can be what could be passed from the user based on their interaction with our application. Then we'll specify parameters in YAML header of R Markdown document. So this will be done within the R Markdown document. And the parameters could be passed from the Shiny app into the R Markdown document and used as the parameters within that document. So key idea, call R Markdown, we're going to call this from the content argument. That's the second function within our download handler. Okay, our argument of download handler. Yes, that's the second one. So that is where we're going to use that. So observe this in action. We're going to use an uh, an alpha. So I have that in my R Studio as well. Let's go in there. So there are some recommendations by Hadley Wickham in the book. So I tried that in the last example here. So this fourth one. So he made some recommendations to copy report to temporary directory. So this is mostly important when deploying the app, since often work, the working directory won't be writable. Okay. So um. So this is what he recommended we do first. Then we have a function that would actually um, perform the rendering of the R Markdown document. Then we have our normal UI. So where we will select the number of points for our plots within the R Markdown document. Then the handler handles the remaining part. Looking at the file name, then the content you can see from what we have in our slide that okay, we should place in the rendering inside of the content that is second function within our download handler. So we are just calling this function name, so which is actually here and compasses the R markdown render function, which we could have pushed in here, but because of the parameters. Is done outside and we're calling the name using this package function all R. The, okay, it gave a reason why we should do this. Let me take you back. So he so he mentioned here. Um, I can't really remember where this was mentioned. So he actually recommend that we run it within that function so that we don't get any errors or any issue there. So, but I'll go ahead and run the app. So we will get some additions from others to better explain that aspect. So I click on that. So what I would do here is the app. So I can change the number of points as I want. Then if I click on this button, I would be able to download the file as HTML document. 
So if I click on this and give it, I can give it my own name. Report downloaded. Okay, we just give it that name. So I'll click on that. So I should have it in my download folder. Let me go there. Yeah. So I have it now in my download folder and it's going to have it's going to have the report created for me that has been rendered from the R Markdown document. So this is the this is the rendered documents created from the R Markdown file as an HTML file. So you can see I selected 72 for my N. That's the value that was given to my N. That's the parameters I was using. And you can see the code here is taken in the parameters. That's the N. So this is how um, we generate dynamic reports via the shiny application that we're having. So um, then there were some other tricks, tips and tricks that were suggested when including report download functionality. So the .r markdown, .rmd renders in working directory. So copy the file. That, okay, that was what was added into the shiny application that I just ran. So then also render so the dot rmt renders in current r process so consider running in separate session with this call r package and that is what was done inside the code that differentiates it from the other normal um code that we've run earlier so let me stop the application and this is what's done here So, go back in here, I think that is, so that is the last part of the chapter as we have it here. So, I hope you can add some comments or additions to what I've done so far with the chapter. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for Lisa, for for, uh, for introducing the chapter. Um, the more we go through chapters, uh, we will get the deeper into uh, a lot of shiny, external shiny uh, libraries that we could use in shiny with R. So here we use like a lot of uh, like VROOM and uh, R function and other stuff. So yeah, and I think this, uh, creating reports from Shiny apps is also very useful uh, if you would like to have this kind of uh, make the user choose what he wants and then produce an uh, output for him to to save it in his local machine and uh, serve them serve him a, re a report as uh, that customized to his information so that's very important and um, yeah. Thanks for presenting the chapter. Um, next, the next chapter, I think you you as well will present it, right? Yes, yes, I'm the one. Okay, awesome. So yeah, yeah thanks everyone for attending and uh, see you next week. Yeah, see you later, bye. Thank you, thank you, bye.